join us for the all new generation of the Toyota Corolla. What has changed in this new generation? The front is more aggressive with this wide, let's say, fake opening because not everything of that is really open. It's rather a styling element. It's also forming somewhat of an X right there, not as X formish as the Toyota Igo, but you can imagine it. You get the LED data running light in a split and this dramatic headlamp design and you get different trims of LED lighting. So, Formula 37, 14 foot 3 or 172 inches is the length here of the hatch. We picked this one here as a main vehicle for today because it was the most anticipated one and also looks most spectacular. Also in this sporty trim here with a contrasting roof and those big 18 inch rims. Well, this contrast paint here, it looks cool. But somehow I think it's just a foil which is then covered with paint because you see this gap here. So you can really feel that there's a second layer over it. It's also the hybrid. We'll soon talk about the engines for sure. Well, the styling is definitely sportier than before. But you can already see that this rear window is very, very flat. Forming a strong shoulder here as well. So it looks sporty. But what effect will it have on the luggage compartment? This generation is a little bit longer, flatter and wider and clearly at the rear you can see that they wanted to stress this dramatic design of this new generation. Taylor MC with a nice daytime running light signature. Also remember how the hatch looks in comparison to the other versions. And it's rather bulky in this area here, really forms out from here. And then again this, already told you, this very, very flat window there in the rear. This is the car key, Corolla logo. Let's check about the door closing sound. Mm, I would say like standard, not too good, not too bad. Inside of the doors, this is here soft touch at the inside right here. And I think it's also in a sleek design that's well done. Then the leather red cover here for your armrest. Automatic window levers as well. Then there's basically a sporty trim here with red contrast stitches. There are different trims available and also different colors. This one here, basically the all sport dark trim. Those seats are completely redesigned. There are different ones available. Those ones are the sport seats, but there are also base seats available where you can move around a little bit more freely, depending on what you wish. This is the cockpit overview. It is not a clean design at all. There are so many different elements. But the material quality has been upgraded that we can realize. You can also get a leatherette dashboard cover. This you know, soft plush material here is really nicely done. You can get it here in black, but also, I'll we'll soon show that with the sedan, in a bright style that also looks really amazing. This is the new 8-inch screen. It stands out a little bit, but then you can also very well see it. Sadly, the software is already outdated right now. Look at the visualization here in the map. That's really not too good. You can pinch and zoom. However, if you not want to use it like this, you have to go here on the left way. I'm not sure why they didn't also put the command here on the right button. That would be easier while driving. You know, and you're like shaking a little bit when you can zoom in with that. That's not possible. All those ones here are the digital instruments with a bigger screen. 
analog still on right on the left side however and then in the screen there in the middle you can have some you know different stuff in there if i power up the car you can have the average uh, mileage for example right there or the, a compass some gps information and so on but it's really hard to learn the system it's very complicated menu structure you have to do it once and then you realize ah you can see now the combustion engine is um, getting activated so far it was then only in the ev mode so i think too complicated in display and also the split between half digital half analog doesn't make too much sense to me one of the technology highlights is the new head-up display. It's a real one. It's projected directly into the windscreen, for example, with the allowed speed, the current speed, and maybe, you know, some more info depending on what you want to see there. And when the seat is set to my driving position, you can see I do hit my knees on the back part of the seat. I still somewhat fit in here, but, you know, it wouldn't be really comfortable on long-term run. And headroom... That does work, so my hairs are hitting the ceiling, but I could still put a hand over my head, so that's quite okay still. And now to the hatch of the hatch. And this is now the price of this flat rear window. If you want that design, then you lose in height right here. You can see, well, they have limited the loading still, so whatsoever. The battery is accessible here from the rear. It's actually quite nice to access then if you change it at some point or, or so. I guess a replacement tire would also fit in here somewhere. Does it? I'm not exactly sure. Well, because of the battery. Hmm, not exactly sure indeed. Well, there we go. You see how limited it is in height here. The rest is quite okay, actually, if we take the measures right here. So the length is... 75 centimeters or 74 you will soon also see the difference then to the estate and to the sedan which will be longer and this one here is about a meter in width so let's take a look under the hood whoa we don't have hydraulic struts so this one here is the two liter hybrid with 180 horsepower 7.9 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour you can also get, in the US at least, a 2-liter naturally aspirated engine without the hybrid, then with 168 horsepower. In Europe, this one only with the hybrid, or also in the US, of course. And then there's a 1.8-liter hybrid with 122 horsepower and a 1.2-liter turbo with 116 horsepower and the manual hand drive. Well. Now to Thomas's driving lounge with the all-new Toyota Corolla and we're starting here very slowly because I'm in the EV mode. So this is the inbuilt hybrid, you cannot recharge it. Typical Toyota system with a nickel um, metal hybrid battery. So those are actually a little bit more durable than the lithium ion when you have like, you know, constant charging and, and, and recharging and so on. So one of the key new things here is the new so-called Toyota new global architecture, this new platform, and that gives you some more agility while driving because the platform is stiffer and it's actually quite, quite nice to drive it here. You can see also here in this first corner. It gives me a good feeling, although we have the normal suspension here, so this is the just plain normal suspension. There's also the adaptive suspension available. But it's always good to know also how the normal stuff is actually doing. To me, that's always very interesting. Adaptive cruise control built in here. I can set the speed and now the car is just keeping the distance here to the car in front of us. So it's working well so far. There's also available the blind spot monitor. You can see the yellow flashing then when someone is overtaking us. The acceleration figure is 7.9 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. Um, well, we have this sport mode where RPMs are turned up a little bit higher. When we do some acceleration now from 80 to 120. Let's see. And let's go. There we go. And 
you maybe heard this is a typical CVT, the Continuously Variable Transmission Automatic Acceleration, where it's more like because this system here, this automatic gearbox system, does not have, let's say, a real, you know, real gear, uh, real, real separate gears. Um, you do have some shifting pedals here you can use to shift up or down, but it's basically an imitating this gear ratio. That's primarily when you want to go downhill and want to have an engine brake or something. Now to some countryside driving that is of course a lot of fun and again it proves my point that this new generation is more fun to drive. By the way, if you think about the Estate and the Sedan in driving which have a 6 cm longer wheelbase, mm, yeah, I mean, this is not such a big difference. You will maybe know a little difference, but usually with those compact cars they rather drive similar. So it won't be the biggest difference in driving. So yes, you will save some fuel inside the city and also save some emissions right there, but so far in our mixed consumption with little acceleration in there, but also rather calm driving than the rest, we're just a little bit below 8 liters on one kilometer, so that's then a little bit more than 29 mpg or 35 UK mpg. And that should be lower in the liters and of course higher in the MPG figures. The steering, by the way, also gives a rather good feeling. It has a direct input. Um, quite often we had that with other Japanese cars that they weren't, you know, as reacting that much, but they've really improved that. When we sum up the driving part here just a little bit, the EV mode really makes sense in the city. It's good to be able to drive silently without emissions locally. Also helps you to bring down the consumption in the overall mix. So now we are uh, you know, up down to about seven liters or more kilometers in our mix here. Then again on the motorway or countryside road the hybrid doesn't play too big of a role but with this new architecture, stiffer chassis, more fun to drive a precise and direct steering wheel, so that's very well done. And also a little bit better noise insulation. So I think a lot of different small points where they have really improved the ride here of the all new Corolla. Indeed, we had some more situations where we could very well use the EV mode or you know, the recuperation or this, you know, some transitions where we had, you know, some more electric driving there. And that indeed brought the consumption down to about 6 liters on 100 kilometers as the average for our test here today. That's 39 mpg or 47 UK mpg. And I think that's then a pretty good result. That's about a liter less than we would have like with those typical two liter turbo engines for a compact vehicle or so. I think you can live with that. And it's also somehow fun to use this hybrid drive. You have those electric moments, so to say, and that's always somehow also rewarding. And it's really cool when you drive all silent in the city. Exterior siding, pretty dramatic in this sporty trim here and the high trim level already looks basically like a hot hatch for sure. It's always a matter of uh, taste, of course. The rear also looks so dramatic, but then again, you lose a lot of trunk space. That's basically the you know, biggest limit of this vehicle, the height in the trunk. And also the space on the rear seats is very limited. On the front, you have actually good comfort here for a compact vehicle. I like that. What I like best about this car is that it was a pleasure to drive it. Such a good drive. I could really drive it all day and had a lot of fun with it. Precise and direct steering. Also, you feel that the chassis has become stiffer. So that was really something to enjoy and that will count for the hatch, for the estate and also for the sedan because they're all on the same platform. Now, what do you think? Please give me your comments right there. Let's discuss the only generation of the Toyota Corolla and your favorite as for hedge sedan or estate.